Klein has a history of, um, of, of being looked at as a thing divorced from the context. That's the problem of the word sign. You know? So that's why I would, in a way, preferring, as Gunther also does, sign making as over sign. Emphasis on sign making. Sign making means there are signifiers, you know, um, whose uh, signifi race to signify is certainly not that of the two sides of a coin. You know, they are much, much, the, the race is much more uh, movable, flexible, and fluid than that. If it is not fluid, it's not because the sign exists like it. If it is not fluid, you know, uh, as I said in various places, it's because people make rules, whereby you have to use this signifier to make that signifier. But that's rules made in certain contexts by certain people. That is not the sign itself, you know. Um, in another context, can do yet other things and uh, people will use it in yet other ways. So that's why I'm a bit worried about sign and a bit worried about the traditional discourse of, uh, of the focusing only on the relation between the um, signifier and the signified and not on the on the sign making and sign interpreting that goes that that really um, happens you know, um, with resource semiotic so semiotic resources yes you know but not semiotic resources have meaning potentials they are not signs that have specific meaning if they have specific meaning that happens in a particular context color is a fantastic example of that you know in one con that's why I was so intrigued by it there are contexts in which color codes are very precise you know, and uh, this color, you know, um, can only mean that, you know, safety codes, traffic signs, you name it, lots of things, uniforms sometimes, you know. And there are contexts in which color is enormously malleable, but not endlessly, you know, uh, and uh, in which its, it's um, meanings are based on supposedly shared cultural associations or on the, or on the, or on the uh, qualities of color, you know, that... Um, that, um, that I have been describing in my book on color. So it's a good example of why you can't simply, you know, uh, take out the sign from its context, um, other than if you do it in the context of describing it in, as a semiotic resource uh, with meaning potential rather than as a list of signs that have specific meaning. Uh, yeah, and then motivated sign is um, that, um, what I would say about that is, you know, again, I would not say that signs are always motivated because I think that if people decide to have arbitrary signs, they will have it. You know, if you give people identif identification numbers, you have arbitrary signs. But it's not because the sign is arbitrary, it's because people have decided, have want an arbitrary system. You know? But most signs are not, are not like that. Most signs, you know, people are meaning, meaning creatures. You know? so, when things come into being, there is a good reason for why a particular signifier is chosen. Uh, the, with language, the only thing is we forget it over the years, what it was. Um, and so it might appear, if you are not thinking, if you're not talking about history, it might appear arbitrary, but it isn't. If you just took the trouble to go back, to go back a bit uh, in time, uh, language is a great um, keeper and preserver of the past, you, know, you will discover why it's called the way what it's called.